Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Vulcan Report. This end of day report is for trading on Thursday, March the 9th, 2017. You're looking at a chart of gold futures. You do remember that for quite a while I was warning you about certain levels in the gold futures that you needed to be mindful of. Furthermore, we discussed this in, uh, in depth in several different webinars in the Black Ops trading room. For those of you that are members of the trading room, you do recall, especially when I tweeted some of these things out, that the 1242 was a key momentum indicator that if we close below that, that the bullish momentum would be lost. I also recommended that you watch the 1229 level, which was a key support level that indicated an oversold condition from which the gold could recover from. However, a close below 1229 would start to set up the bearish perspective for the metal. I furthermore gave you two more key support levels within the bearish configuration of 1216, 1206. You notice how the market kept respecting those levels. Well, today, unfortunately, the market disrespected the final support of 1206. What does this mean? It means that now 1150 is in play. We may get there fast and furious. It's also showing us a few other things that I want to be able to put on the chart so you can take a look at it. And I need to know if I can show you this or not. So let's see here what we got. Hold on one second. Okay, so at the moment I'm not able to get it to do what I wanted to do, but I'll figure that out at a later date. Anyway, as uh, you can see here, the price is getting worse. And we're heading into further decline with momentum gathering strength. And we also have some downward pressure. So 1150 is in play. Uh, the only possible thing to help would be around the 1189 area. Possible bounce. Uh, and we could start to catch here the ramps. And that could help save uh, the decline and kind of stave it off at least for a bit and we could catch a bid back up to the 12 25 12 30 range however a crash below the Kumo cloud does open up that 1150 and even further drop than that so this is looking pretty nasty now on the daily chart as well as the weekly chart uh, let's see here yep here we go right here that 11, around 11.87, somewhere around there on the weekly. All right. Uh, this this market is pretty much, for all intents and purposes, lost all momentum. All positive momentum has pretty much been phased out of this market at this time. So with that being said, it's pretty much a wrap at this point. Um, we'll see if this uh, market can gather some legs here, but right now it's just not looking likely. All right, taking a look here at silver. On the weekly chart for the silver, as you can see, pretty much the same situation is happening here. Um, losing all momentum in this uh, old support down here, that $15 handle, unfortunately, is now in play. Looking at natural gas, Natural gas has really been uh, on a tear here. You can see it's making that run toward that $3 mark I was warning you about. So that is in play and looks like it should be possibly taken out as early as uh, Friday's close. That will open the door for a run up to around the 350 range in the natural gas. Taking a look at the U.S. dollar. U.S. dollar is on a tear. It is making that 102 support, like I told you. It's building upon that now. And by the end of April, we should easily be closing at 104-ish or somewhere slightly above there. 
So the dollar is on a tear along with Bitcoin. Taking a look at the crude oil market, I have been telling you about the extended trading range and the elongation of this range. On the weekly chart, it's a little bit more visible than on the daily chart. As you can see, we've gone pretty much nowhere. We're trading inside of here. All right, this resistance and support. So basically, this is showing you that the 51 $52 handle has been acting as major uh, resistance within this trading range. So as you can see here, we have struggled to stay above this $52 line. All right, so the range extends from 52 to 55. That's a $3 resistance uh, in this trading range. So you've been trading with inside that $3 channel. All right, and now all of a sudden you're closing below it. Therefore, you can see that it's testing this support level of $48.90, and a close below this opens up the bear march down to $40. Can it help itself? Can it gather some legs? Or are we going to $40? let us find out. Looking at the NASDAQ 100, and we've been eyeing this one for possible hints, and you can see this one is still powerful. We just came off of 54, and I think it wants to break through that. If we don't do it tomorrow, which is kind of setting up that we might, then we should be able to best it next week. But this market is still powerful. As long as it can close above 52.94 tomorrow, the market should be okay. The bull perspective still marches on. Taking a look here at bonds that we've been watching. And you can see here that the bonds are still weak. We got down to 146.17, which is a new low. And the market is now in a position to fall off of a cliff, which is what it is doing. So you have a guarantee of interest rates rising more than likely this month in March. All right. It's pretty much a done deal. All right. Rates are going up. There's nothing they can do about it. Can't stop it. So with that being said, we're going to keep our eyes and ears open and see what happens. Now, tomorrow is supposed to be a big government report. I don't know which one it is. I don't know if it's jobless claims or something else, but I know that it's a big report, and that's kind of why the stock market's been kind of stagnant all week. So depending on what happens tomorrow, we'll set the course for next week. This right here is the miners also falling off a cliff, but doing it slowly. Right now, the old support down here of $27 is in play. You're going to need a close about $37.20 to stop this. And that's almost $5 away. I don't see that changing tomorrow. Therefore, we're going to have another bearish week. This will be one, two, three, four weeks in a row of sliding in the miners. This is not good. However, if you take a look at JDST, which you really can't on the weekly chart on here. It's just so tore up. But on the daily chart, you can see it's been marching, but it's really stopped here. For the This is week number three that we have not been able to best $23.50. Just cannot best $23.50. Gets close, looks like it wants to do something, and then here you are. We need to close above $23.50 if this thing is going to gather legs and make a run toward the bottom of the Kumo Cloud at $27. Ferry to close tomorrow above twenty-three fifty shows possible weakness or some kind of dislocation because the GDXJ we see is falling off a cliff and heading lower, but this is kind of like doing nothing. It's not going anywhere. This is a three X ETF. It should be moving three times as much as the GDXJ, but we're not just we're just not seeing that. So with that being said. We got a lot to watch out for tomorrow. Tomorrow's close, Friday's close, will be significant for multiple markets. Let's see what can happen here. What are we going to see? Is there any clues that are going to be given to us? Even looking at your volatility 
side of the equation you can see it's kind of quiet too and here's the daily chart not a lot going on there really no signals to pick up in the chart action here you go it's still holding its bullish uh, complexion on the weekly chart you need a close above 6474 tomorrow and that shouldn't be hard because we're almost three dollars above it so as long as there's not a shock tomorrow uh, with the economic numbers I think we should be fine uh, in setting up the bull argument for next week with that being said um, remember do yourself a favor come on over to pulsewavetrading.com learn how to trade these murky waters learn how to profit from the stock market learn how to profit from what the fed does and doesn't do learn how to profit from what the central banks fail to do learn how to add additional income to yourself and provide for you and your family and to be able to learn how to hedge your physical portfolio learn all these things at pulsewavetrading.com sign up for the academy the learning academy is stacked full of webinars stacked with information that you will not get anywhere else not a college university classroom not a textbook not you won't find it anywhere it's based on many years of experience of yours truly learn how to put the algorithms to work in your favor and for those that have recently subscribed please 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 remember to check your junk spam and trash folders in your email I cannot tell you how many times people say I haven't heard back from you blah 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 and there's their welcome kit right there in their email because they forgot to check their spam junk and trash folders bulls make money bears make money and pigs get slaughtered so remember to take what you can give nothing back Peace.